everybody. Welcome to another DxO webinar. I'm your host, Photo Joseph. For those of you who may not have enjoyed a webinar with me before, greetings. It's a pleasure to meet you. Um, today's webinar is a, a one-off. We're not going to be repeating this, so if there's anything that you missed from today's session, or if you uh, tune in late, although if you tune in late, you won't hear this part of the message, but um, if you miss any part of this, this will be coming out to you via email in about 24 hours. You should get an email with a link to be able to watch the recording of this webinar. Um, also, at some point, I think it'll get posted up on the DxO YouTube channel. Uh, this is just, as I said, it's a one-off. It's one of many webinars. And just to remind you that there are more of these, if you go to nickcollection.dxo.com slash webinars, you will see a whole series of these being put on by myself and Mr. Dan Hughes. And uh, there's the ones up here only on the website right now only go to the 12th of August, which is, wait, is that today? Well, that's today's, excellent. Well, there are more coming. I don't know why they're not on here, but there are more. You may have gotten a newsletter that has them. Um, please do register for some more of these if you enjoy this sort of thing. Uh, throughout today's webinar, I will be answering questions in real time as we go. We get a quick little shout out in the chat room. Just say hello, tell me where you're calling in from, and um, let me make sure that you guys can hear me okay. I got one person saying sound is very bad. That's interesting. Is anybody else having audio issues? Um, we've got one person reporting audio issues. Please let me know. Um, that would be that would be very odd. Sound is fine. Sound is fine. No. Okay. So for you, uh, Mr. Warren, who's having issues with the sound, maybe consider resetting your speakers or even logging out and back in again. Okay. Loud and clear. Everybody can see and hear me fine. In that case, let's get this thing going, shall we? Let's get rid of Chrome here. And we are going to be working primarily out of Photo Lab today, and of course with the Nick Collection. Now. Um, as you, uh, if you have already purchased Nick Collection 2, then you undoubtedly have noticed that Nick Collection 2 comes with Photo Lab, uh, the, um, what is it called? Not the Elite Edition, the Elite Edition is the big one, comes with the Essentials Edition. There we go. So there's Essentials and Elite. And the primary difference between the two is the prime noise reduction, which I actually am going to show you today just to kind of show you what some of the differences are in there. But we're going to be working within here and then going into the Nick Collection as well, into a couple of the plugins. I'm going to be working with three different pictures today, taking three different approaches to noise reduction, elimination, disguising, and so on. So I, again, in case I didn't say it in the beginning, today's session is all about dealing with high ISO photos. How do you deal with that? And it doesn't necessarily mean getting rid of the noise, because sometimes getting rid of the noise isn't the best option. And as far as I see it, there's really two directions to go when you're dealing with a high noise image, other than obviously just leave it alone. Uh, there's the elimination direction. You're trying to get rid of as much noise as possible. And then there's the disguising it direction, where you are trying to cover it up or mask it or otherwise hide it, typically using grain, a grain effect. So if you have a noisy picture and you add a film grain on top of it, then you can hide the noise. The noise is still there, but you're kind of hiding it. And so you can do either one of those, and of course you can kind of have a, a combination of them. So that's exactly what we're gonna do in today's presentation. I've got three different pictures in here. Um, this one uh, that's up on the screen right now of the lion, we're actually, of the tiger rather, we're actually gonna go for the elimination aspect. I'm gonna try and make it as clean as possible and uh, we'll see what the end result of that is. This one here, I'm going to do a kind of a combination effect. This is a, a family photo. It's not, it's not a fantastic photo, it's low light. It's not even tack sharp and focus. Um, super shallow depth of field, very dark. They're actually watching the fireworks. That's where the light is coming from. So it's a, it's a rough photo to work with, but I really love the shot. And so I'm gonna see what I can do to save that. And we're actually gonna start with this one here, which is an extremely high ISO. This one is 51,000 ISO, 51,200. And for this one, we're going to go down the disguising it route. So three different photos, three different approaches to noise reduction. Again, if you have questions at any time throughout this presentation, just drop them into the chat room. I will be popping over there occasionally and taking a look at um, at the questions that are in there. Someone's saying they're not interested in PhotoLab. Well, it comes with the Nick collection, so we're gonna see a little bit of that today. Now, we're gonna start, as I said, with this photo here. The left-hand side of the photo, she's blown out and not even in focus, so we're gonna ignore her. We're really focusing on the main subject, this girl here. And I'm gonna pull this photo up in two different apps, in PhotoLab as well as in Photoshop Camera Raw. And the reason I'm doing this is to show the difference in the native noise reduction. This is just what you get straight out of the software when you open it. No other clicks, no other enhancements made. This is just what you get. So you can see here, it's quite a noisy image. You can, especially if you look at her face and the background here is a really good way to see it. You see a lot of noise happening there. It's clean noise. It's not colored noise. That's great. The software has gotten rid of that, but it is noisy. And if we look over at PhotoLab, 
you can see it's still noisy, but less so. It is definitely a cleaner looking image. So that's just a nice starting point, just to see the difference in there, to see that you do have that cleaner image to begin with. Now, the noise reduction is happening over here in the on the right hand side, you see this noise reduction is turned on. And right now it's set to HQ or high quality fast. Next to that, you'll see the prime button. And the prime button is something that is only available in the Elite Edition. But underneath this, you have a, a luminance slider, so you can kind of adjust. It's basically the amount of noise reduction. And you actually have a magic wand to the right of this. I think for this image, if I click it, oh, it's, it's cranking it all the way up to 100, which is kind of ridiculous, um, way too much. I mean, you can see here it's, it's done awful things to our skin, so we're definitely not going to go that route in here. This is the one that I'm going to uh, work on the noise by disguising it as opposed to trying to eliminate it. So I'm going to go back to its default of 40 because we do want some noise reduction, right? If I turn this off, let me just show you that. If I turn this off entirely, here's what the original photo looked like. Now this is, it's an unfair representation because you never see the photo like this unless you manually disable noise reduction. All raw software, all raw decoders do noise reduction. And so you should never see a photo with all this color noise. Every app worth its salt is going to get rid of that. However, what it does beyond that is really dependent on how good the software is. And so this has done a pretty good job. Now, I do want to show you what the Prime looks like, because I know some people are interested in that. So um, I have to do run a little trick here. I'm actually going to quit Photolab, run over to the Finder here, and I'm going to throw away my Photolab license and open up my Elite license in here and relaunch it. And that is going to allow me to launch the same software into the elite version and then i'll go back to the actually it doesn't matter i won't go back but um but i would normally go back to the essentials edition for the rest of the demo but it, it doesn't matter for this okay so same photo let's zoom into her face again at 100 percent and we're going to start with the same uh same hq fast noise reduction so let me just let everything settle into place here so we can see that there we go so you can see it's on her eyes there now watch in this window here the small window when I apply the HQ fast noise reduction as I have now, it will first draw in the small window and then it will update on the main screen. The prime noise reduction actually doesn't do that. The prime noise reduction we will only see in the preview window and then it will render when you export the image. So the only way to see it applied to the whole photo is to export it. And that's simply because it is so processor intensive that it doesn't do it on the full size screen. So we're gonna be looking just in this window here. Um, if you wanna reposition that, you click on this little box here, you can reposition what it's gonna look at. So let's make sure we're seeing her eyes nice and clear. And then I'll hit the prime button, give that a few moments to render and there you go so you see that you almost have that level of cleanliness that we had in the hq fast by taking it all the way 100 but we when we did that it looked really blotchy so we're getting the smoothness without the blotchiness so it really is a fantastic fantastic noise reduction tool but since if you are a nick 2 collection user and you don't have that we're not going to work with that we're going to work with what you do have um, i just wanted to show that to you to show you what the difference is and, and there is an upgrade path i'm sorry i don't know what it is but uh, there is an upgrade path to go that way if you want to okay so we're starting in here with this photo i'm going to do a couple things to this picture before i send it off to the filter uh primarily i'm going to crop it because as i said i want to get rid of that other uh girl in there the other subject so let me just oops grab the crop tool i guess that'll do in fact let me uh change the aspect ratio of that. I'm just going to go for a, where are we? Unconstrained aspect ratio. Crop this how I want to. I want to get rid of that other hand and maybe pull in a little bit on the side here. Call it done. Okay. Hit done on there. And let's see, don't want to do anything else to this. The shadows are a little bit on the dark side in here on her shirt. She's wearing a black shirt. The sun is, or the light is behind her. It actually is sunlight. It's natural light. Um, so I'm going to lighten that up a little bit. I'm going to use the DxO Smart Lighting. And the reason I'm doing all of this here as opposed to just doing this in the plugin is because I am still working with a raw file. From Photolab, when I send this picture off to the Nick collection, it is going to get rendered out as a 16-bit TIFF file and sent off, which still gives you pretty much all the latitude of the raw file. But I'm in raw right now. I just want to take advantage of the raw file while I've got it. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up the smart lighting a little bit. I'm trying to bring up some details in her shirt here. I don't want to get too crazy in there. Um, yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. And then I want to point out another problem with this file. I, again, remember, this is like, this is a bad file. This is a bad picture, frankly. It's super high ISO, 51,200. The, uh, it's in focus, but it's so 
noisy that we're actually not seeing it all that sharp, which is unfortunate. And also the sunlight on her face on here is so bright that it has actually blown out her nose and her forehead a bit. If I was to take the exposure down, and this is, by the way, this is how I, I would always check a file like this. If I just want to see before I go anywhere else, if there is detail in those blown out areas, I'll take my exposure slider and just drag it down. And I don't, I'm not trying to fix the image at this point. I'm just trying to see if there's any detail in the highlights. And if I take the exposure slider way down on here, we'll see that in fact there isn't. We can see that this is definitely clipped in there. So what that tells me is that I've got something else I need to hide I need to disguise uh, this is let's say this is the only photo I have I love the photo whatever reason this is the one that I'm working with so I've got to do something about the noise and I've got to do something about that clipped highlight in there so that's what we're gonna be working with um, I think that's everything I wanted to do in this photo before I moved on let's see here oh maybe do a little bit in curves let me pull out of this a touch and see do I want to lighten anything up in curves a little bit maybe bring up the shadows a little bit more although the smart lighting did a pretty good job of that eh, we're gonna call it a day okay so now let's send this thing off to a one of the Nick Collection plugins. So to do that from the photo lab, you just click on the new Nick Collection button right here, and we are going to do this in Silver Effects Pro 2. Now, so I'm going to be converting this to black and white. Now, for me personally, if I'm going to add a lot of noise, a lot of grain to an image, to me that translates best in black and white. Now, obviously, this doesn't work for every photo, and you can clearly do this with color photos as well. But I feel like as a viewer, we are more accepting of seeing a lot of grain in a black and white image. We are used to seeing high grain, high ISO black and white photos, whereas a high ISO, high grain color photo tends to be, it has kind of a negative connotation to it. We don't really like that as much, but a lot of grain in black and white, it's like two thumbs up. That's just cool. So, uh, you know, maybe it's a personal thing, but that's how I feel about it. So I'm going to take this one into black and white. Um, what happened to my... Oh, there it is. My go to meeting disappeared. I thought I might have lost you guys. Let me take a quick look at the questions in here. Um, uh, someone asked for me to touch on HQ versus Prime, and there you go. Someone says they're not seeing my screen. I'm assuming other people are seeing my screen, or I'd be getting a lot more people yelling at me. If you're not seeing my screen, look around in the interface in GoToWebinar. Um, you should see no Im Okay, I got multiple people saying no image. All right, guys, confirm for me. Do any of you see my screen? Or else, uh, or else we got a problem. It shows me that I'm sharing my main screen. Let's see here. All good in Austin. I see you. Yes, people see my screen. Okay, so for those of you who are not seeing the screen, look around on the GoToWebinar interface. There will probably be a button that says to toggle between views. You could view just me, just my screen, or both. Um, I don't have the same interface you do, so I can't tell you exactly where to click, but that's what you got to do. Whew. Man, that was close. And sorry for those of you who missed the first part of it. Again, you will be getting a copy of the video. A lot of people, okay, I got it. It's like oh, 200 people telling me they can see my screen. Um, thank you. <laughs> uh, you will be getting a copy of this video afterwards. Okay, so onwards. Now, I'm in Silver Effects Pro right now. If you are not familiar with Silver Effects Pro at all, let me give you a very brief tour of it. Essentially, on the left-hand side, you have your preset library. So you have all presets in here, and then there is a uh, collections. They're kind of broken down into collections, what they call classic and modern, and then there's the new on Vogue presets, which are part of version two. Um, underneath that, you have your custom. So if you've, if you've created any custom presets, if you want to import any presets, you can do that. There's an import button down there. On the right-hand side, you have all of the actual adjustments. And... Every NIC filter, if you're totally new to the NIC plugins, every NIC filter does work a little bit differently, just as part of the nature of how they were designed and when they were designed, frankly. Um, but this one, this particular filter, uh, this particular plugin, Silver Effects Pro, has a series of filters on the right that are always there. You don't take these away or remove them. You can turn some off, but you don't add or remove them like you do in Color Effects Pro, which we will also see today. Uh, but you have this stack of adjustments here. And however you set up these adjustments, when you save that as a preset, it gets saved over here into custom. Or of course, you can use the built-in custom presets. And what you have over here on the right-hand side is, just to do a quick little tour through here, you have global adjustments, that's your brightness and contrast, and then structure, which brings out detail um, in a really, really nice way, especially if you have maybe a, a portrait of an older person who's got lots of wrinkles in their skin, you wanna really enhance those wrinkles, that can be a, a great thing to do. Or if you have a picture of, uh, I don't know, anything nature, like a, a tree, um, a bark texture, dirt texture, rock texture, and you really wanna enhance the texture, structure is fantastic for that. 
You have your selective adjustments, which we will use today as well. This is the control point, so I'll hit on that when we come to it. You have color filters because this is black and white, and so if you've ever shot black and white before, then you know that if you are shooting black and white film, you could actually take color filters, red filters, blue filters, orange filters, put them over the camera, and that enhanced that color, darkened or lightened that color in the uh, in the final photo. It's, it's remarkable, and you can emulate that here in software. Then you have film types, and this is really cool because you get into actual film stocks in here. You know, Fuji Neopan, Kodak 400 T-Max, Ilford Delta 100, uh, Kodak P3200 T-Max, one of my favorites. It's awesome to see all these different films recreated in here, so you have those to go for. And then there's a lot of control over that particular film stock, even down to individual color sensitivity. Very, very powerful. This really is an extremely advanced black and white tool. And then there's the finishing adjustments, and we'll spend a little time in here as well. You can tone an image, add some color to it. You can work on your vignetting. You can burn individual edges of the picture, um, add borders to it, and so on. So there's tons and tons of stuff in here. We will be going more in depth into this filter in uh, specifically, I think even in the next, I think my next webinar is dedicated to black and white portraits. I might have that wrong, but I think it is. And I know that the very last one I'm doing is also all about black and white. So if you're really into black and white, you're definitely gonna wanna check those guys out. Okay, um, onward, let's see here. So I personally often start, even though I use these tools a lot, I often start with the presets. I find that the presets are a great way to get inspiration. If you're new to the tools, they're a fantastic way to get to learn the tools. If you're totally familiar with them, I still think they're a great way to get inspiration because you can go through and just click on different presets and often get dramatically different looks for your photo. And sometimes that'll take you in a direction you hadn't originally intended. You go, oh, that's, that's really cool. I hadn't thought of that. And it's a great way to find different things that you can do with your photo. So I almost always start with the presets. So I'm just going to do that here. I'm going to go to Unvogue, this, again, the new category, and I'll start clicking in individual ones and, um, you know, see what we get. So, you know, that's kind of cool, kind of traditional looking. Okay. Dark pop. You can see it's treated the shadows a bit differently in there. Um, dark selenium. This is kind of cool. And one of the cool things about this I want you to notice is her face. Let's zoom in closer to her. Remember, we have those blowouts that I have to contend with. Well, the way this has treated it is kind of blended it all together, and I've got this nice silver sheen and noise or green pattern over it, and so it doesn't look blown out anymore. If I compare it to the original, we see the blowout in the original, and by the way, that's just right here at the top. There's a compare button to do a before and after, or you can do a side-by-side -side or a split screen on there. Split's pretty cool. You can put that wherever you like, um, so different ways of looking at it. But that's that's really awesome. So that's I'm going to keep that in mind. That one's pretty good. Uh, you can whenever you see one you like, you can click on the little star here to mark it as a favorite. So I might do that. Uh, let's see. Here. Let's just try some other ones. Let's zoom back out again. Highlight fade. No, I definitely don't like that. Um, intensifier. Not really doing it for me. More silver. Yeah, it's really making that highlight look bad. So that's definitely not a good option. Ominous fade. Okay, this is looking pretty cool. It is also doing something good to the the highlights in there. Maybe a little bit too much. Uh, we might be able to adjust that, but it's it's a look. Let's let's save that one. Uh, contrasty, no. Subtle glow, definitely not. Sun bleach, you know, maybe maybe not though. Yeah, probably not. Okay, so I marked a couple of favorites. I'm gonna go back here to the favorites tab, and I see the ones that I marked there. Just makes it easy for me to jump around between them. And in this case, I'm just gonna go back and forth between these two and try and decide which one I like. Um, I think I'll, I'm gonna go for that. I'm gonna go for that ominous fade actually. No, let's go for selenium. I, let me let me take another look at the face in there. Yeah, and that works out. I like what it's done to the highlights in there. So we're gonna work with this one. Let me take a quick look over the questions to see if there's anything else. Uh, let's see here. Um, could people having some audio issues? A couple of people saying they lost sound and it's coming back on. It's a go-to-webinar thing. It happened last time as well, and I know that my, my connection is clean because it's not happening for everybody. That is unfortunate. Someone asking, Dane Wilson asking, does SilverFX Pro 2 have the zone system? It does, and that is actually what my final webinar is going to be all about, but I'll just give you a sneak preview of it. If you go down here to the bottom right corner where it says loop and histogram, as you hover over, you'll see these numbers show up at the bottom, and those are the zones. There's zone 0 through zone 10, and so you can highlight exactly what is in every zone. And if you want to keep that on screen, let's say you're trying to get a certain uh, part of the image into a particular zone, you can click on that and that makes it sticky. And in fact, you can turn multiples on. So I just turned on zones five, six, and seven so I can see exactly what's in that range. Very, very, very powerful. Again, that's something I'm gonna go into in my final webinar of this series. Okay, uh, all right, so I got this one up here. 
um, this is looking pretty good. But let's kind of see what made this. Let's see what uh, what put this together. So I'm going to go in and start with my film types. I think it's a great way to start playing with it. Let me zoom back out again. And you can see this one is started as a uh, Kodak 3200. Oh, no. What was it? Oh, it was a neutral. It started off as a neutral. And it had um, some curves applied to it um, that are pretty dramatic in there. I, let's just try a different film stock. Why not? Let's just go down and try something. Like there's a Kodak T-Max 100, which is really rich now i think part of it is because it's, it's kind of combining with some other things a little bit too rich but I, I know that i like these film stocks so as much as i love the preset another approach to take is to just start completely from scratch which is a great way to go about it as well and if you were going to start from scratch you go to the first preset the very first one is just called neutral you click on that and all you have now is a straight black and white conversion that's it no other enhancements no other film effects nothing else added so let's do it this way let's do it the manual way Presets are easy. You can figure that out on your own. Let's play with the actual manual controls. So I am going to start by choosing a film stock. And again, lots of beautiful film stocks in here. I'm going to choose one that I used to shoot film, uh, shoot all the time, uh, T-Max 400. I used to shoot a lot of film back in the day. Kodak T-Max 400 was one of my favorites. Love it. Um, in this case, really a bit too dark. I mean, it is, I don't, I don't remember if the film was quite that dark, but this is really too much. So I'm going to look at the curves. Where is this coming from? Look at the curve in here and they've definitely crushed the blacks on the curve. So let me just, let me just adjust that. I'll pull the, pull the baseline of the black point over, maybe lift those lower shadows up a little bit. And there we go. Look, pulling up all that detail back into the shadows. Okay, cool. All right. Off to a good start. Nice and easy. That's good. Uh, let's try the grain. It might be a little bit too much grain. Let's zoom into hundred percent. And I really recommend really recommend whenever you're going to adjust grain, add grain to your image, that you always look at it at 100%. Now, if you are planning to print, you have to look at it 100%. 100%, you have to look at it 100%. If you're going to go to the web, to Instagram, for example, then you are going to be viewing the image smaller. So there's two different approaches to this, and you can do whatever makes more sense to you, whatever fits into your workflow. You can either look at the image a bit smaller on screen and even make the window smaller so that it does appear smaller because this is more like what it will look like once it's on Instagram, and then start adjusting the grain until it looks good at this size. And at that point, you might go, okay, that looks good at this size. If I zoom into 100%, well, that's just ridiculous. It's way too much grain. But zoom back out, that looks pretty good. And that's going to be let's say reasonably accurate for when you export this off to your phone and say, uh, size it for Instagram and put it up on your, um, well, on your phone and Instagram. Reasonable uh, simulation, sure. Reasonable simulation of what it will look like. A more accurate way to do it, but more time consuming, would be to do the effect with, do the filter effect without the green, export it out as a, uh, as a TIFF file, at the size that you're going to eventually put it on your phone, which would be 1350 by 1080, no, 1350 by 1080 wide, and then bring that smaller file back in and add grain to that photo. That'd be more accurate. It's probably a bit too much work, but if you really wanted to be super accurate about it, that would be the approach to go. And of course, that goes for any web size. So I'm just using Instagram as an example. You do it for whatever you're going for. Um, anyway, so we're back into this. So I am playing with the grain in here again. I probably should look at it 100% take a look at the grain per pixel. Now the grain per pixel slider can be a little confusing because it's it starts at the top at 500 and you think 500, that's the most. It's actually, if you read it, it says grain per pixel. So, okay, they're not really putting grain per pixel, but that's kind of a way of counting it. And at 500, that's the highest setting, you're adding no grain. So it's a bit weird because it's the highest number, but you're actually not doing anything. If I took it all the way down to the bottom, one grain per pixel, suddenly the image becomes just a puddle of grain, puddle of sand. So that's the differentiation there. So what you want to do is the lower you put the number, the more grain you, more visible grain you have. So you um, you can decide you know how you want that to look and and go something like that. Um, let's see here. You know, I, I know we're off to, we're, we're doing pretty good. Let's see if we can do something with her face on there. Remember the whole blowout issue? Let's do that with the selective adjustments. So this is the control points, the U points they are also called. Control points are something utterly unique to the NIC plugins. And if you haven't seen these before, this is a fantastic way to work. So just in the event you've never seen the control points before, you probably have seen linear and radial gradients before. And even if you haven't seen those, you've certainly seen dodging and burning with a brush. And if you're going to dodge and burn with a brush or do anything, paint, effect in, saturate, whatever, 
you're brushing. It's very inaccurate. Uh, you can go in with a masking tool, go in with like a pen tool and draw an outline of the area and maybe feather that a little bit and affect the area in there. Also a whole lot of work. Um, gradients, radial and linear gradients are a pretty good way to go because it applies the effect at 100% in the middle and then fades it out towards the edge of that radial gradient or if it's linear, it's top to bottom or side to side, however it's orientated. Um, but it's not super accurate, right? If you have like a radial gradient over a face, if I put a radial gradient over her face here, I really only want to affect this side of it. And I still have to go in with a brush and get rid of the stuff on this side and how I brush around the shot. It's just, it's a lot of hard work. What control points do is they create a mask for you in real time based off of the chrominance and the luminance of where you clicked. That is the color information, the colors of where you clicked and the brightness values of where you clicked. And so it creates this mask in real time and you can preview exactly what the mask looks like in real time as well. So here's how this works. I grab on a control point. I'm going to click on the bright spot of her nose and I do have a radius that's kind of a, a circle of influence, if you will. Um, it does go outside of this circle, but less and less. And it really isn't super critical to have that on there unless you're trying to isolate very precise areas. Uh, but we're just going to put it right here on her nose. And then I, I haven't changed this image at all yet. And then over here, to the right of the control point, there's this little box on there, and I click the little checkbox, and I can now see exactly what is being masked. Let's zoom out of this a bit. Whatever is white is being masked, black is not, and then of course any shade of gray in between is partially masked. So you can see it is just doing that bright side of her face and then a couple of these bright spots on the, uh, the chain there. If I take this circle smaller, it is going to isolate it more to just her face. And if we zoom into this and I start dragging this around, as I move this, you'll see different parts of her face that are getting selected as I move the mask. And I know that what I want is that bright spot on her nose, a uh, part of her forehead in there, so let's maybe make it a little bit bigger. And that's what I'm trying to control in here. Okay, so now that that's in place, I can hide the mask and I can go in here and adjust it. And to adjust it, you do it right on the control point itself. So you've got uh, three adjustments by default, your brightness, your contrast, and your structure. But there's a little triangle here. You click on that and you get a few more things. Amplify whites, amplify blacks, fine structure, and selective colorization. If you wanted to like do that black and white photo with a red rose kind of thing, you could do that in here. Um, and I'm just going to take the brightness down a little bit on her nose. See what happens there. Pull that down a little bit. And it's working. It's still really bright. Remember, it's, it is clipped in here. But it's kind of blending together in a way that I think I'm okay with. And so... We're going to call it a day. All right, so there we go. So I've got this image that was super high noise to start with. I have hidden the noise by adding grain to it. If I just to just to drive that point home, if I take the grain per pixel, I draw it all the way back up. You can now see. And let me actually even look at this at 200%. Let's go a little bit tighter in here. You can see the noise. It's got that really sharp black and white pattern in there that looks like noise, not like grain. But as I start to add grain into this it masks that out. It starts to kind of break it up a little bit. And if I really wanted to take it home, I would go down here to the soft and hard slider and take this down towards soft a little bit. And it starts to soften those black and white separation points in there. And it just really starts to make it look much, much more like film grain than like noise. And at that point, I've got something that I can sell as a believable high ISO image that was shot with film and not shot on a DSLR. So kind of fun stuff. I'm going to go ahead and save, apply this out, and this brings us back into, um, into Photolab with that black and white image. There it is right there. All right. Oop, is it loading? There it is. And there it is. Okay. Let me take a quick look over the questions, then we'll move on to the next one. Um, Joni says, I have access to my photo through, through ProLab. I suppose you mean Photolab, but don't see on Vogue in the listing of the preset library. So that is, remember, inside of the NIC plugins, every NIC plugin has its own presets. One of the new sets of presets, the new collections of presets are called Unvogue. And that is in, uh, let me think, it's in Silver Effects Pro, Color Effects Pro, um, uh, Analog Effects Pro, and HDR Effects Pro. And I think that's it. I think it's just across those four that have those new presets. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. Joni, if you still can't find it, let me know. Um, Catherine is saying, will you be explaining how to use curves and silver effects at some point? That's something I will do more on, on that final one. Um, I'll probably do it on the next one, which is black and white portraiture, but I'll really be hitting that hard on the final one. That's about using the, um, the zone system. Okay. Uh, let's move on. All right. So now we're going to go to the next photo. So this photo, the whole purpose of this one, once it loads our tiger friend here is to get rid of as much noise as possible. 
my objective here is to not add any grain, but just to eliminate noise as much as possible. And if we look closely at this picture, let's zoom into 100% on here, this is quite, quite noisy. It's a little bit lower ISO. This one's shot at 25,000, <laughs> lower ISO, 25,000 ISO. Um, it's on a Micro Four Thirds camera. It's actually kind of an older one, a GX8, so it's a fairly older sensor. It's uh, it's not as advanced as the latest Micro Four Thirds sensor, so it didn't handle the low noise quite as well. And see, we're really seeing quite a bit of noise in here and a bit of breaking up of the image, um, and it's just a bit flat. The, the image is flat overall, so we've got a few things to work with here. Now, when it comes to noise reduction and trying to actually get rid of it, one of the tricks that you can use to make it look cleaner if you can get away with it is to scale the image down to make it smaller if you reduce it by 50 percent you are throwing away three out of every four pixels of the picture right you can double the width the width by the height if you cut the width in half you cut the height in half that is a quarter of the amount of data that you started with so you can hide a lot of mistakes you can hide a lot of noise you can hide a lot of artifacting by scaling it down so it all depends on what your end goal is. In this case, my end goal isn't to have the biggest file possible, it's to have the cleanest file possible. So if that means a smaller file, so be it. That's the way it's gonna be. So I'm going to take three steps to, to finalize this image. I'm going to reduce a lot of noise, kind of too much noise, which is gonna add some uh, denoising artifacting to it. And then I'm going to break up that denoising artifacting by adding grain to it, not because I want it to look grainy, but because I want to break up the artifacting, and then I'm going to export it and scale it down, which is going to hide a lot of that, hide pretty much all of that grain that I will have added, giving us a cleaner image to begin with. So it's kind of a three-step process. So we'll start in here with the, uh, since we're working in Photolab today, we're going to start with the noise reduction on here, HQ fast. I'm going to put the preview right over the eye there. You can really see it in there, and I'm going to hit the magic wand button, which I already know it's going to take it all the way up to 100, which is going to be kind of crazy probably a bit too much i'm going to back it off a little bit but you can see here what happens this is the really the example of why what happens when you take noise reduction too far if i zoom out here's kind of the crazy thing about it if i zoom out of this um this now looks really quite clean but we know that it's not because we're not actually looking at the whole thing but this is giving you a clue already as to what's going to happen when i scale the image down on export i am going to actually hide a lot of that artifacting but for now we're looking at it. We've got the artifacting in here, so it's a bit too much. I'm gonna scale this down to about maybe 90 or so, just to take a little bit of that edge off. Uh, basically what I'm trying to do is I wanna find the point where the noise is gone, and I don't wanna go any farther than that. Um, and actually right about, let's say, around 80 actually works pretty well on there. Okay, cool, we've got that. Um, next, the image is too flat. We already knew that, we talked about that, so I'm gonna fix that with curves. Go down to the curves. I'm just real simple. I'm going to do a little S-curve. Take the shadows, pull those down a little bit. I don't want to go too far in here. I'm, and I'm watching my histogram over here. I don't want to shove everything off to black and end up clipping anything. I'm going to pull my shadows down a little bit, maybe pull the highlights back up a little bit. And uh, yeah, that's yes, looking pretty good, right? Okay, we're off to a good start again. Zoom in 200% just one more time. Look at our tiger's face. Again, you can see that denoising artifacting. See, look at it closely here just to really drive the point home and go into 200%. See the weird patterns that we're getting in there? That's part of the denoising. So the noise is, for the most part, gone, but we're now left with this weird artifacting. That's the kind of stuff we're going to get rid of in here. Okay, uh, so I'm going to now take this off to Color Effects Pro, and we're going to work in there. While that's firing up, let's see if there's any other questions that have come up. Joni, has, you're looking at Silver Effects and don't see Unvogue, then I would recommend reinstalling. I'm assuming you're working with Knit Collection 2. The most, it was just released, what, two months ago or something now. So if, um, if you've installed 2, if you are for sure working with 2 and you haven't, you're still not seeing them, then I would just reinstall it. And you can go to the DxO website, go to knitcollection.dxo.com and download the trial. It's the full version. Um, it just, you know, you have to enter your serial number. So you can re-download it. And if you can even run the uninstaller, just like have a fully clean install and then install again, it should definitely be there. Uh, Cynthia asking if replays will be available. Yes, you will be getting an email about uh, 24 hours after this ends with a link to a video of this. Other people saying the sound is going in and out. I wish I knew what to tell you about that. Um, but like I said, people were reporting that last time. I'm going to talk to go to webinar about it and see if they can pull any reports because there is nothing that I can see that I can do. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Um, and Peter, thank you. I'm glad you think I'm doing a great job. Okay, so we are in 
Color Fix Pro right now. And once again, you've got lots of presets to work with in here. Um, I go to my Unvogue category. There's the Unvogue again. And there's some kind of fun, cool ones in here. Like this Blue Monday kind of works a little vintage you're looking for this. Uh, I'm not looking to make a look out of this. I just want to have a nice, clean, natural photo. So I may or may not want to use any presets in here. Um, I've obviously gone through this before. And I found that there is a preset that works pretty well in here. I'm going to go down to this. Uh, actually, where was it? No, I've lost it let's go back to all presets it might have not been one of the new ones it is called vintage saturation it just looks nice okay there it is it just looked nice it's it's a it's nicely saturated the blacks got a little bit too black so we're going to fix that i definitely don't like the border on there um but overall i think it's a nice looking image okay so let's uh let's clean this up a little bit let's get rid of the borders first of all so this incidentally we're in color effects pro slightly different workflow than inside of silver effects pro in Color Effects Pro, you have a series of filters here on the right that you add to, and you get to those from the filter library over here on the left. Now, I just realized, guys, I'm so sorry, I never made my mouse bigger. Let me do that real quick, uh, just to make this a little bit easier to see the cursor. Sorry about that, I totally forgot to do that. Um, over here in the filter library, have all these different filters in here that you can add. To add a filter to either to a preset or just to start from scratch, you have a little button here that says add filter. What you're effectively doing is adding a filter holder. See now it says empty filter. And then I can go in here and I can add something like pastel. And I've just added that pastel on there. And if I want to get rid of it, I click the little X and boom, it's gone. So in this case, this preset loaded up contrast color range, lens vignetting, image borders, and film grain. Don't want the image borders, so boom, get rid of that. The vignetting is a little bit too much. I do like it, but it's too much. So I'm going to go in here and dial that down a little bit. And I say down, but I'm dialing it up because vignetting is based off of a zero center point. Negative vignetting makes it darker. Positive vignetting makes it brighter. I do want the darker edge, but not much. It was just a bit too much. So we'll just change that up a little bit in there. And then the grain, the film grain that it has, this is where I want to uh, I want to pay close attention. So I'm going to zoom into 100%, and I want to add just enough grain where it breaks up that artifacting from the noise reduction, but it doesn't actually look like I'm adding grain. It's going to be a fine point to find, a fine needle to thread. So as I'm playing with this, and I don't know how well this is going to translate to your screen because of internet, um, but I am trying to find that fine threshold there and right about there pull it up a little bit no it was definitely better down here I'd say right about there right about 350 we are seeing if you look at his nose that was the area that i was really focusing on look at his nose in there i'll do a compare in fact let me do a split screen here so it has time to draw in the event that it's um taking time to get to you you can see on the left here there's definitely some of that weird cross hatching coming from the uh, the denoising algorithm and on the right it's gone. Now we are seeing a little bit of grain in there, which I didn't want, but again, I'm gonna output this at half the size and that is going to uh, hopefully eliminate that. So I think this is pretty good. So I'm gonna go for this. All right, hit save, it's gonna render out. And now the final step, and you don't have to do this final step, right? I mean, this looks pretty good right now. Go to this to 100%. I mean, that looks pretty darn good. Um, if we select the right one, it'll look pretty darn good. There it is. That looks pretty darn good. But again, my goal here is to get as clean as possible. So I'm going to click on the export to disk. If this says something else other than export to disk, click this little share button next to it. Whatever you choose here, uh, the last thing you chose shows up as a button there. So export to disk, I've already done. So I click on that. Uh, there's different presets that are included in here. You can make your own presets in here. I'm going to scale this, so enable resizing. Curiously, there's no percentage. <laughs> You can't say 50%. I don't know why, uh, but here's my resolution. The original image is 5184, so 5184 divided by 2 is 2592. So boom, I already typed that in, 2592. And I'm going to export this out. So process is JPEG and export, 95% quality. And it's going to go to the original image folder, which means where the original image is. It's going to go there, which means that it's actually going to show up in DxO Photo Lab right next to the original. So there's the TIFF. And there's my new JPEG. And so now that one at 100% looks much cleaner. It's obviously still not as good as if I shot it in ISO of 100 or 400, but it is so much cleaner than the starting point. Let's go back, in fact, to the starting point here. We'll even zoom this out to 50%. And you see where we began and where we ended. 
and it is a, well, I guess I have to do that one, I have to toggle back and forth, and that is a much, much cleaner looking image. So that is yet another approach. So we've seen the completely let's just hide the noise approach. We've seen the let's get rid of the noise as much as possible approach, and now we're gonna blend the two. And for the final picture, this one here, we're gonna do a bit of both. And for this photo, I'm not necessarily trying to make it, um, oops, I'm wrong button, not necessarily trying to make it as super clean as possible, uh, I'm not trying to make it look as natural and realistic as possible. I just want a nice image because I really love the photo and this is something that I want to be able to uh, maybe even print and put on my wall or you know at least have on my phone as a nice looking clean shot, et cetera, et cetera. So, so my goal here is just to find a nice happy medium to make this look good. Well, let's see if there's any other questions here before we move on. Lots of people saying sound is fine there. I'm glad to hear there's no problems with sound, so it is definitely only some people. Uh, John Keller is ba in batch processing. Is back batch processing difficult in DXO Photo Lab 2, and are the plugins usable in batch processing? Okay, I know how to batch process using Photoshop. You use you set a, an action for the filter. Um, I don't use Photo Lab every day, so batch processing out of Photo Lab, I don't recall. I honestly don't recall, um, which is a great segue for me to tell you guys if you have any questions that either I can't answer like this one right now or that you think of after the show is over, feel free to hit me up on social media. Twitter is best. I'm Photo Joseph everywhere. If you go on Twitter, search Photo Joseph, you'll find me. Publicly ask me there and I will find out. I won't remember after this and of course I don't know how to reach you, John, anyway, but uh, if, you, if you hit me on Twitter, I will find the answer for you. At least if there is an answer, I'll get it for you and um, and respond there. So that, that's for any of you who have any questions, they either don't get answered or you think of them later, hit me on Twitter. That is the best way. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. And Lucy says, I have the Elite and Nick too, but Nick does not appear on the right side of the application. That is interesting. Um, hmm, you should see that button there. So I don't know. That might be a DxO support issue. Um, if you're not seeing this button here, then that, that sounds like a DxO support issue. I'm sorry. Okay. Onward now, uh, this image here. So we're working with this photo. Uh, if I look at it 100%, we'll see, first of all, let's see, this was shot on a Lumix G9, it's 25,000 ISO. It's a 15th of a second, so it's already kind of a long exposure. So any movement that was happening is gonna be a little bit blurry. Focus, I might have nailed focus on him, on his face, but uh, this is a very, very shallow depth of field lens. I know this because there's no lens data in here, which tells me I know exactly which lens I was using. It is a 25 millimeter f0.95 manual focus lens. And, uh, and even though he probably is in focus, she definitely is not because of that super shallow depth of field. It's not, not off by much, but you know, it's off a little bit. So I, I gotta work with what I've got. So let's go ahead and start with a bit of base noise reduction. We'll go over here to the HQ noise reduction. And of course it's already on by on a little bit. If I turn it off, then there's the completely unreduced image. Again, you would never actually see that, but just showing you what it started as. And if I hit the auto button, I think it's also gonna go up to hundred. It seems like the auto button is just to take it to 100 today, but we do that and this is, this is no good, right? I and mean, this is just awful. It's really done awful things to his skin. It's got these weird blotchy colors coming through. So clearly that's no good. In fact, I. I have played with this slider already, of course, on this image, and I think that the default position of right around 40 is actually pretty good. Uh, it is looking about as clean as I can expect it to get on this image. Maybe, maybe we go a little bit. Let's try just a little bit more. Let's try like 60 and see what happens in there. But um, I don't expect much to happen. Part of the problem is because it's um, – let's split the difference. Let's go to 50. Because – it is a little bit soft, partially because I might have not nailed focus, partially because it's a 15th of a second, partially because uh, you know the kid's moving and um, and there's the noise, like all these different reasons. The noise reduction it looks even worse. It ends up making it even more blocky and awful. So it's, you know, yeah, you work with what you got in here, but that's the point of today's session is to take an image that is not that great and try and do something nice with it. Um, it's a bit dark. Let me take a look at the curves on here, see if I can lift this up a little bit. Um, there's not, there really isn't a whole lot of shadow detail in there. So I think what I'll do is just lift up the shadows on their own. That's a little better. At least we get his his jacket coming in a little bit. Um, don't want to go too bright on there. I just lift up the shadows just a hair. Ah, it's good enough. Okay. And Nick Collection, off we go. I'm going to use Analog Effects Pro this time. So we're going to go for a little bit more of a um, of a kind of vintagey old picture look. Let's see what happens. All right, once again, once it opens, 
I'll be playing with presets. So this tool works slightly differently than the ones before it. Uh, this tool has something called a camera generator. We've got to wait for it to finish where you can add different tools to create a camera. It's a, just another preset. Uh, top right, top left, I lied to you, top left. Classic camera, open this up, you see there's all these different buttons of different types of cameras that are built into this. You've got color cast cameras, and you've got wet plate cameras, and you've got um, multi-lens cameras. You've got all kinds of fun stuff in here. And then on the left, you have individual tools. Now, this is a little bit of a weird way to work, which is why whenever I show this tool, I like to point this out. If I click on any one of these, it's going to replace everything on the right. So if I go back into Classic Camera, I click on one of these presets, Classic Camera 5. It has added basic adjustments, dirt and scratches, lens vignetting, film type, and that's it. Okay, that's what it's added in here. So then I go in here and I go, oh, let me add, um, let's add light leaks to it. And I click on light leaks, and everything is gone except for light leaks. Oops, not what I wanted. So I'm going to hit undo. And the way that you add an individual one is you have to first go into the camera kit where it says build a camera. You go into camera kit mode, and now you'll see as you hover over these, there's a little plus button that wasn't there before. So now I can add an effect by clicking on the plus button, and it adds it into its preordained position in the stack. This tool, Analog Effects Pro, has a specific order in which all these different filters have to be in. Color Effects Pro, which we were in earlier, you can actually rearrange the order of those effects and it will change how the how the image is processed it's the processing engine passes through from top to bottom and so if you put for example a color filter and then black and white after that the end result will be black and white whereas if you put a black and white filter and then a color filter on top of that you will have a black and white picture that has been colorized so there's a difference or in the order of stacking in color effects pro however here in analog effects pro it doesn't work that way in analog effects pro there is a preordained order to things things. So just to understand some differences in the tools. All right, so I'm going to go into um, the vintage camera presets. There we go, vintage camera. And, you know, I'm going through and clicking on these, and there's some kind of cool ones with flares and borders and all kinds of fun stuff. And um, in the interest of time, I will just click on the one that I know is the one I'm going to work with, this one here called Vintage Camera 4, which is, I think, a nice starting point. Let's let it load. Get ahead of myself here. While that's loading, let's see if there's another question that came up. Uh, oh, Mary says, thank you. You can see the cursor now. Sorry, I should have done that sooner. Deborah says, uh, when adding multiple filters, sometimes I get a blue cast. How do you get rid of that? Um, it's going to depend on the tool you're in. Sorry, that might have been back in the Color Effects Pro. If you're getting a blue cast, a color cast, there is actually a color cast reducer tool in Color Effects Pro. So if that's where you were, look for that. Put that at the end of the stack and see if that will help get rid of your question. Um, Melody asking about the upgrade paths. As far as upgrades for when you bought and when you can upgrade and free upgrades and all that, I have absolutely no idea. That is a DxO question. You have to reach out to them directly. I'm not an employee of DxO in case you hadn't, um, if, I, if I didn't mention that earlier. Um, so you have to reach out to them directly. Go to the website. They've got a support system in there that's really good. Okay. So I like the look. I like the colors. I like the these shadows maybe a little bit maybe a little bit too dark overall, but I like that there's a flare. Um, I don't like the blurring happening. So that is this bokeh one. I'm just going to turn that off because I don't want it to blur out my wife in there. That's terrible. I like the lens flare idea, but I don't like this one. So I'm going to go to the light leaks and you'll see there's a whole these different light leaks in here. So I just start clicking on different ones and pick one that, you know, might be cool and just try and see what happens. And when you load one as well, you can move it. So you see this little uh, crosshair that pops up there. I can grab this and move it around. So it is effectively what you're looking at is a file that looks like these thumbnails here that is being overlaid on top of the image. You can change the strength of that, so I can bring it all the way up, and you can see it's super intense on there. I can scale it back a little bit. And then there's different categories as well as soft, crispy, and dynamic in here. So I'm going to go to this. Um, let's go to soft in here, and um, I think maybe this one here. Let's dial this down a bit. Might have kind of a nice look to it. I don't know. It's kind of, kind of boring, isn't it? It's the one that I had put in my notes, but now I don't like it. So I'm going to pick a different one. Let's try something else. I just want to have a, a little bit of kind of fun lens flariness going on to this image um, for no other reason than because I can. Let's try, let's try a different category. Let's go to crispy. Crispy ones. Let's see if there's a good crispy one in here. What's this look like? That's kind of, kind of interesting. Kind of an interesting look off to the side in there. I don't know. I dig it. You know, why not? Hey, we're playing here. We're having fun. You can do whatever you want. Let's say right about, right about there. That's kind of good. Now, here's a neat effect. Let's say I dig this, 
but it's a little bit too strong on his face on there and maybe on her face too. I just want to kind of scale that effect back. And if I scale the strength back up here, it takes the strength back everywhere. So let's say I like it like this, but it's too strong on his face. So I'll go down here and you'll see at the bottom of this. And again, we're in the light leaks category. At the bottom of this, there's this thing called control points. And there's, we talked about control points before. I, when I add a control point here, what it's doing, it is allowing me to reduce the strength of the filter just in that area. So if I want to, I can preview this and see exactly what's going to be affected. So pretty clearly right on his face right there. And then I'll take the texture strength and let me just dial that down over his face. It's not quite so strong. I'm going to do the same thing on her face. So I'm going to hold on the option key and just drag this up over her face, bring that up a little bit. Let's actually take it up a little higher than that. I don't want it to be twice as eliminated. And there we go. I'm like, okay, that's what I like. I, I, you know, that's what I want to do with it. Totally my call. Totally what you want to do. Let's take a look at film types. Let's see what we've got under here. Now we saw film types in Silver Effects Pro where you had very specific, you had Agfa film, Kodak films and ISOs and everything else. Here, you don't have any of that. It's much more an arbitrary, just click on something and see what happens. And it's worth pointing out that Analog Effects Pro is very much designed to be a playground. This is not necessarily a place where you come to create a very specific, precise look. This is more a place you come to have some fun, click around on a bunch of different things, find something you like. And if you find something you really like, save that recipe because you might want to use it again later. And to do that, you just write down here at the bottom, there's a save button. So in here, I just click on different film types. I've got three, or no, more, I have uh, what, five categories. Warm, cool, subtle, black and white, neutral and toned. So I've got three color ones. Um, let's go for cool, because it was evening things. We'll go for cool film tones. And we just click on these different ones and see what they look like. And um, yeah, you know, you just play with it. It's actually kind of, I don't know, it's actually kind of nice. Uh, let's take that, make it not quite so faded. Let's add some more grain into that, crunch it up a little bit. We go, like some vintagey grain going on in there. I don't know. Do I like it? I might like it. Why not? Let's just pretend that I love it. <laughs> well, pretend that I love it. So we, you know, it's, it's off to a good start. We're getting somewhere. Let's let's do one more thing. Let's add some curves into this. I'm gonna go back into the camera kit and add a levels and curves at the end of this. And maybe if I feel like my shadows got too dark, I can pull those up a little bit. Maybe do that reverse S curve, kind of the same thing I did. Or if I want to go the other way, you know, let's just make it a little bit more contrasty. Let's pull those shadows down a little bit pull the highlights up and pull that in there. It's starting to kind of break up that grain a little bit. Let's add a little bit more grain into there. This is definitely not where I intended this picture to go today, but that's okay. Let's look at it hundred percent. See what we've got in here. We'll take a look at his face, let that draw out. So there's that grain showing up in this, make it a little bit softer in there. Just breaking it up, you know, hey, why not? It looks kind of cute and cool. And there we go. So I hit save and it renders off and away we go. And that is all there is to it. That is everything that I wanted to show you today. So I just stole a bunch of questions in here. So I'm going to take the rest of this time to answer these. Um, and Nick says, when do you use or enable resizing as opposed to not using it? When do you use enable resizing? Oh, on export. Okay. So he's, he's asking, Nick is asking in the export, if I want to resize the image, scale the image, I have to turn this on, right? If I just, if I want to export the image at hundred percent of the size, then I turn that off and it doesn't scale it. By enabling that, it is going to scale it to whatever I punch in here, whether it's uh, in pixels, centimeters, or inches, it's going to scale it to that size. So that's that's what the resizing is for. Uh, Donald says, Nick Collection button has only been available in the last couple of upgrades. Correct, that is new as of uh, the Nick Collection 2. Dave says, is the noise tool in Nick better or worse than the tool in PhotoLab? I use Lightroom with the Nick plugins today. Okay, great question. The Nick Collection has a dedicated noise reduction tool it is called denoise no what is it called it is called it is called define the noise reduction in photo lab is better especially the prime uh the advantage of using the noise reduction in the nick tool the define is that you can very easily isolate it to specific areas because you do have that uh the control points in there so you can take more noise away from this part of the image less noise away from that part of the image but the algorithm isn't as good. It's quite a bit older. The photo lab algorithm is definitely a newer algorithm. Uh, in the future, I would like to see, and when I say in the future, I don't know anything. I'm just, this is what I hope as a end user, as a consumer of these products, what I would like to see is that level of noise reduction, especially what's in Prime, taken into the NIC tool so that you can do that. I think that would be fantastic because it really is nice to be able to isolate those areas. But that is something that you can do. I don't show it because it's pretty old technology. Uh, but there you go. And that's probably what Don is saying. Why aren't you using Define 2? There you go. I just answered your question for you. Um, some other people asking about Define. Uh, 
if you want to say, oh, let's just take a look at Define. Since people are asking about it, let's go ahead and jump into it. Let me go to this photo and let's see here. I will, uh, what do I want to do? I want to set this to its kind of lower. I don't want to get rid of, should I turn it off? Let's just, let's find out how good it is. How about that? We're going to explore this together. I'm turning off noise reduction entirely in Photo Lab. Good grief. Let's find out. I have no idea what's going to happen right now. Go into Define. Uh, yeah, use unique names. It's because it's rendering out a TIFF file. And there was already one there under that name. Let's see. I honestly I have not looked at Define in a really long time. So let's see what happens. Okay, so the way this works, I'm remembering this now. <laughs> First of all, you notice it's not even a high DPI interface. Tells you how old it is. The image has just been analyzed, and it is automatically looking for different grain amounts in different parts of the image and it has created a bunch of different little boxes in here for which it is sampling data for noise reduction so you got there's one there over the leaf it did a tiny one there over the leaf that's kind of weird um one over his paw one in the shadow there a teeny tiny one on the rock down there and um and that's it so let's go into 100 percent uh let's see here that is funny because it's not a high dpi image i mean it's not a high dpi um what do you call it um interface it is kind of doubling everything so can i, I need to get this to 50 percent which i can't seem to do i go to 300 percent, and 100 percent is actually 200 percent hmm well we're gonna have to look at it at we're gonna have to look at it like this so all right let's let that draw it's really hard to judge when we're seeing it this way, but we'll bring it back into uh, into the plugin, uh, into Photo Lab and compare it side by side. So you've got um, the measuring has been automated. So that's the, where it's sampled out the different areas. You can actually go into a manual mode and you can draw boxes around the areas that you want it to judge from. So that's cool. Um, then there's a reduce your contrast noise or color noise. You have that. It's basically set by default to 100 percent. And then you can do control points. So let's say I'm going to have to zoom out for this now. Let's say that I wanted to do more noise reduction on, um, I don't know, on his fur. I could take a control point, drop it under there, make that as big or small as I want. Um, do I even have the ability to see the mask in here? Interesting. I do not have the ability to see the mask in here. Okay. And then do my noise reduction. I'm going to have to look at this 100%, which means I have to look at it at 200%. And from here, I could do color. So it looks like we're still getting a lot of color noise in there. So let's take the color noise. I'm assuming going higher is going to do more reduction. Ooh, that does not appear to be the case. Let's go this way. Okay, it looks awful no matter what. I think I'll just leave it in auto. <laughs> that was better. It's still pretty, pretty noisy in there, isn't it? Okay, now I'm like 8 million percent. Zoom back out. Well, let's just leave it at the default. So we're going to let it go at its default settings. Let's render it out and see what happens save and we'll compare it side by side comparison in real time live let's see how it works all right i, I can't do can i do a split screen i can do a, no i can do only do a compare and after for the same image i can't do a split screen of two different photos unfortunately um is that the nick one there's the nick one okay so there we go so there's let's go to 100 percent and again yeah, that's massively not as good. Um, I'm sure I can do better in this. I just, because I haven't used the tool in forever and ever, uh, the intricacies intricacies of it escape me at the moment. But you can see the default from that versus just the straight up, straight out of the app, turning on noise reduction. Let's turn it back on um, and how that looks. And it's a massive, massive difference. So um, if you are using it and you're getting great results, then don't let me stop you from using it. But that is my experience from it. Uh, you can add control points, Ted saying, yep, absolutely. That's, that's what we just did in there. Um, I just not doing a very good job of it. Um, oh, you can, oh, you can, I think you can hold control to see the mask on the control point. Oh, you hold down a keyboard, hold down control key and it shows you the mask. Um, wow. That really is the old method. Wow. I forgot that that was a way to do that in the old day. I actually quite liked that. And then they took it away. Apparently not from there. Okay. All right, folks. Hey, that we just nailed the timing on that. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Again, if you missed any part of this, you will be getting an email, getting an email in 24 hours with a link to watch this video. 
If you have any questions that you think of after this, then by all means hit me up on Twitter, at PhotoJoseph on Twitter. Also, you can come visit me on YouTube, youtube.com slash PhotoJoseph. I've got a YouTube channel where I do a whole bunch of education videos on, um, on photography and video, both hardware and software, gear and technique, photo and video, it's all over the place, and, uh, and at PhotoJoseph.com as well. So with that said, everybody, thank you very much. Appreciate you tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.